Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here to talk about this, uh, this really important topic. And I've really been looking forward to this event. Um, we have been working with the European Union on the concept um, of a uh, high level, high standard investment and trade agreement between the United States and Europe for quite some time now. We've really had serious discussions ongoing for almost a year and a half. Um, for so long before uh, President Obama and his counterparts here announced their intention to negotiate, we've been working to try to lay the groundwork for a negotiation so that we can maximize its uh, prospects for success. And during that period of time, we've had many, many interactions with the business community, with uh, the U.S. Chamber, with the uh, American Chamber of Commerce to the EU, and many, many other of the European business uh, organizations like Business Europe and others uh, to get their support so that we could uh, feel confident that in launching this we would have um, the support of the business community. Frankly, I don't think that we have done enough outreach to entrepreneurs, small businesses, NGOs, other stakeholders. That's why I was really looking forward to this event because I understand that this is a diverse group of people uh, in, those, in that category. So I'm delighted that we'll have a little bit of opportunity, uh, hopefully, uh, before this panel is over, to hear from all of you, to hear what uh, the prospects of a free trade agreement between the U.S. and the EU means to you, to your businesses, and, and to the prospects for your futures. I have spent... Um, most of my career in the private sector, I'm now in my, my second tour in government. I served under President Bill Clinton and now, of course, under President Obama. And each time that I went to government, uh, we were, it was a time when new presidents, Democratic presidents, were elected at a time of significant economic crisis in the United States. And in each of those instances, uh, those presidents put job creation at the top of their agenda. Under Bill Clinton's presidency, I had the privilege of serving as our telecoms regulator, the chairman of uh, an agency called the Federal Communications Commission. And I'll never forget, early on uh, in my tenure there, uh, we got a memo from the White House saying that in every rule that you write, every action that you take, you have to consider the impact of your action on job creation in the United States. And I'll never forget, I had to pull together a group of economists who spent all of their time writing these very, very um, technical tariffs governing the way that um, telephone companies are able to price their services. And I got them in a room and I said, you know, in every order that you write, I want you to explain how that action is going to create jobs in the United States. And they looked at me like I was absolutely crazy because they had never uh, thought about connecting their day-to-day uh, -day life to creating jobs. And this happened across the United States government at that time. Well, over the eight-year period of the Clinton administration, uh, we created 22 million jobs and pulled the United States economy out of recession. Now, something similar is going on in the Obama administration. Yesterday, Mike Froman was here, who's our deputy national security advisor, and he told us that every morning they have a meeting and they go around the room and everyone is, is challenged to say, what are they doing today to create jobs in the United States? I tell these stories to, to ju just to point out that we talk about a free trade agreement, but it's really important that we connect uh, that negotiation to what its significance is in creating jobs and improving the quality of life of our citizens. Uh, and it's vitally important that we keep that connection. And that's why it's important for all of you to get behind this agreement and tell government leaders and our trade negotiators what this means in very concrete terms in order to improve your lives and, and generate growth. And when I talk to business leaders, I often challenge them to do that. Because as Minister Crichton said quite eloquently, I think she gave a great overview of why we need this, uh, this agreement. But we have a unique window of opportunity to get it done. 
It's in a u unique period of time. The stars are aligned in a very unique way. Uh, and that window of time won't last forever. Uh, forever. So it's, it's important that we maintain a, a great sense of urgency. I talked to one business leader recently, and <clears throat> I asked him, well, what does this mean for you? He's a, uh, the CEO of, of uh, UPS for Europe. And he said, well, it's, it's real simple. For every 22 packages that I move in Europe, it creates one job. So if we can create more economic growth, obviously that translates into, uh, into more jobs for, uh, uh, for the people on both sides uh, of the Atlantic. There is, uh, I think, a, a real imperative to create a sense of urgency uh, because this, this moment won't last forever. Um, our economies uh, hopefully will continue to recover, but quite frankly, one of the reasons that we have this opportunity is because both the United States and Europe are struggling. And so it's an opportunity, really a historic opportunity, to get something done that we haven't been able to do in the past. Uh, after I was in the um, Clinton administration, I spent a lot of time uh, in the private equity world. I was an investor in telecom and uh, media companies. And I learned a lot about job creation uh, in that job because I, it was a business. We bought and sold companies and we, we hired new managers. And it was really fascinating to work with a lot of high tech companies and to see how they created jobs for people, not just in the United States, but all over the world. In a very key period in the, uh, uh, in the Silicon Valley boom from 1995 to 2005, fully 50% of the founders of technology companies in Silicon Valley uh, were foreign born, mainly engineers from, from Asia, from India, Pakistan, China, but also many, many Europeans. In fact, some of our most important technology companies in America were co-founded by European immigrants. Intel, Google, Yahoo. And it reminds us all that there is a global competition for talent. Somebody told me just yesterday that in the past year, almost 100,000 young Irish people have left Ireland to find jobs elsewhere. And many of them are among your most talented, well-educated people. Well, this free trade agreement is an opportunity to create the conditions for growth to keep those people here. Well, I'm going to stop now because I want to, as they say in the US Congress, yield my time back so that we can have some time for discussion. But I, I hope that um, we will have an opportunity to hear from all of you about what this agreement means for you, and more importantly, what you can do to help all of us in government make it happen. Thank you.